Hey guys, in this video we have a lithium ion battery to review. So let's open it up. And we are double boxed. Look at this, Roy Pow. Wow, that is tiny. So we have about 10 and a quarter inches by six and a half. And we have eight and three quarter to the top of here and about nine to the top of the terminal post. It looks like we also have a, I'll turn this around actually. We have a Bluetooth symbol there. We have a power on off button. We have a 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100% state of charge. And we also have a port here for a plug-in. Now I think I seen online, it's kind of too bad that it didn't come with the battery itself, but I think you can actually plug in a like uh, a display. So it looks like this battery has a continuous charge of 50 amps. Maximum continuous charge is 100. Continuous discharge is 100. Discharge protection, 200 amps for 20 seconds or 180 amps for five seconds. That's a lot of surge power for this battery. Uh, we have Bluetooth, M8 bolt, 3,500 charge cycles. Oh, that's nice. They have a wire gauge chart on here. So all the different amperages uh, and the gauges that you need for that and the length as well. So this is power Uranus, but it came in a Roy Pow box. So I think this is a company affiliated with Roy Pow, obviously. And Roy Pow makes great batteries. Oh, so they actually say to use the Roy Pow app. So let's download and take a look at the app. It looks like this is the app here. Okay, so gives you all the information you need anyways. We have the overall percentage, total voltage, amps going in and out. The Wi-Fi switch doesn't seem to do anything. It does click a relay in there, so I'm not sure why that's there. Uh, they also sent me a battery charger. So we have their 10 amp battery charger. We have a user manual, a plug. That is really, yeah, that's kind of cute compared to what I'm used to for chargers. They're usually a lot bulkier. Doesn't state it on here. I wonder if this is water resistant. It does not say that it is water resistant. Uh, you get a pair of alligator clips, and we also get a pair of ring terminals with the charger. So let's plug it in and see what happens. Ooh, that doesn't tighten up all the way. Okay, the bolt's bottomed out and the charging cables are loose. I think they're anticipating you to have another lug on here. Now these screws are actually pretty small. I think these are, I think these are M10 bolts, not uh, M8. Let's look back at that manual. Battery terminal, M8. This has got to be an M10. Because if we look, this is an M8 bolt. This is an M10. So we have a discrepancy in the manual. But nonetheless, we're going to put a lug on as if we were connecting it with a trolling motor. Yeah, that's tight now. Okay, so they give long enough bolts as if you were going to be connecting the charger with something else. And I'm seeing 9.5 amps going in. Let's test that. We have 9.47 and 9.5. 9.48, 9.5 on the app. So we're within range. So I'm going to let this charge up and uh, we will be back. And we are now fully charged up on this Power Earnest battery. So you can see there we're at 100% and we have a cell differential of 0.009 volts, nine millivolts. That's pretty good. And that's fully charged. So that is beautiful. Uh, let's start up our discharge test. Okay, and we're ready to go. Let's power up the capacitors of the battery or sorry, of the inverter. Okay, now let's put a load on it. Okay, we are discharging at about 80 amps. So I'm gonna let this run. I want a quick discharge test. So we're gonna let this run for 80 amps and it should take about an hour. So we'll be back then and we'll see what the capacity is. All right, and the capacity test is complete and we got 102.884 amp hours out of the 100 amp hour battery. And one more thing, remember kids, electricity can kill you. Say can or will? Will. Electricity will kill you. 
Okay, so let's open up the battery past capacity. So it looks like we just have these rubber caps here. I'm assuming and hoping that there's screws in behind there and I won't have a huge issue trying to open this battery up. So I'm gonna try and open it. Okay, and it was just fill up screws around the perimeter and all these holes. And it was just held on by these little sticky pieces here. And these just literally stuck right on over top of the Phillips screw. And we just had little tiny baby Phillips screws here holding it on. Okay, the battery and everything wants to come right out. Okay, there is a lot going on here. What a small little package. We'll turn to the bottom. So we've got a heat pad here on the bottom, which we will test. It looks like that's it, just the one heat pad. Yep, just the one heat pad here on the bottom, which is good. That's exactly where you want it to be, is right to the bottom of the battery, because that's where all the cold is going to be. And then the heat is going to rise up through the cells. We have metal banding that's riveted, so I don't think I'm going to be able to see what type of cells these are. I can feel the top of the cells here. So these cells are facing up. So I'm just ever so gently trying to peel this tape up. And you can see here, we have a bus bar that's coming around the side of the cell and then our positive is connected here, right here. So I can't get to the cell now, the, to the QR code for the cell. Now these, this is a Roy Pow battery. I have no doubt they're using great cells. We pulled full capacity. So I'm not gonna try and dig too much deeper on that. Uh, you can see here, you can see here we have a bus bar from the negative that runs down straight to the BMS here. And we have a Roy Pow stamped BMS. Roy Pow CLY. And then we have SPB22-TI04-001-A-02. And that is stamped right onto the actual board of the BMS. And right here you can see we have the connection for the heat pad that's on the bottom. And we have a heat sink for the BMS back here. You see we have the heat sink here. It comes out the other side. And that is pretty well it. We have our balance lead cables. Where's our temperature sensors? So you can see right here, glued to the top of the bus bar on the po on the positive, that I think is the temperature sensor. And you can see, I think they're all soldered on and glued, all the balance lead cables you can see up there. So let me very gently, T2. Oh, and there's another one over here. Okay. So there's another temperature sensor over here. And then there's one right here. So they have a temperature sensor on the positive terminal and on the negative terminal, which is the best place to have the temperature sensor because you're getting the direct temperature of the actual cell on the internal. That is very smart. So let me go get a ice pack and then we're gonna test this for low temperature protection, just the one temperature sensor. Okay, and as you can see there, we're charging with like 2.6, almost 2.7 amps. Let's put that temperature sensor in the pack. And right away, and right away we had cold temperature disconnect. So let's warm this back up. And that was real time. Okay, we are charging again. Now normally if the heat pads are engaged, you'll see the amperage go back up. Now let's try cooling both of these. We have cold temperature. Discharging has now disconnected as well. Let me check the actual cable. Okay, I'm not seeing any current on the heat pads. So that's curious, I'm having an issue getting the heat pad to turn on. I was hoping I didn't have to do this, but I'm gonna put this into a freezer and leave it for 24 hours and then see if we have uh, the heat pads turn on. Cause I should be seeing amps on here or even an amp draw on the cord actually going to the heat pad itself, but I'm not. So I have a cooler here by Bougier V and I'm going to drop it inside and leave it for the night. Okay, so I'm gonna let this chill overnight. I have this cooler set to minus eight degrees Celsius. So we'll leave it and see what happens. Come back in the morning. 
Okay, welcome back, folks. So as you can see here on the app, we are minus one degree on temperature sensor zero, minus one on one, minus two on temperature sensor two, and minus two on temperature sensor three. So we are good and frosted. Okay, so zero amps and give it a second. And I just heard a click inside the battery. So the heat pads are heating. We have zero amps going in, but here on the bench power supply, we have 2.627 amps going in, which means that is powering the heater. So I apologize if my mic wasn't on before. I just noticed it might not have been turned on. But anyways, you can see here, so cell zero and cell one, which is on top of the cells, is at three degrees now. We're about 10 minutes later and T2 is at zero and T3 is at zero. Okay, that took about 20 minutes. Oh, you can see there we have uh, two degrees on two and two degrees on three. And we are charging with 2.8 amps, but we're charging here off the power supply at five amps, which tells me that the heat pads are actually still on. So the heat pads are still on and we are heating. I bet you at five degrees, it's gonna bounce up to the full charging and stop heating. So I'm gonna let this run for a little while longer. Uh, that took about 20 minutes. So I will be back if that goes up to the actual five amps there that's on the bench power supply. All right, and finally we're getting full amps now. So it looks like T2 and T3 are now at 13 degrees, seems to be the magic number. And we are pulling now the 5.1 amps, which is what the bench power supply is putting in. So that actually tells me if the battery gets below 13 degrees, then the heat pad will kick in, not just at freezing. So it probably has like a preemptive thing where it'll keep the battery warm if need be. It just doesn't wait until it disconnects, which is a great feature actually. So it'll only do that on charging though. I don't believe it'll do that just on its own because it's not going to deplete your battery. Maybe if it's at a certain percentage, uh, something I could test in the future, like maybe if it's above 50% and, it, and then it goes below 13 degrees Celsius, then maybe the heat pads will kick into like 50%, which would be actually kind of cool. So, I mean, and this is probably the smallest package of a battery for a heated battery I've seen on the market. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comment section. I'm gonna look forward to playing with this battery in the future. Let me know what you think in the comment section below about this. And as always, thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Bye.